Hi everybody, it's Chef Martin coming to you once again from Thermalworks, and today we're bringing the heat with Anthony Lujan of the Pitmasters podcast and Smoke Ain't No Joke Barbecue. Anthony is one of our culinary specialists, and we're excited to cook a steak with him today because you just won second place in a, in a local tournament? Sure did, yeah, we just cooked uh, at the local Ace Hardware. That's fantastic. And uh, we're excited to eat this steak, obviously, but to show the people at home how it is that you make a competition style steak that wins, that wins gold tickets. So what kind of steak do we have here? What are we doing? Yeah, this is a ribeye, but it's a tryhard. It comes with three different muscles. What I like about the tryhard is that it, it has a very nice tenderness, but it's more difficult to hit that tenderness while getting the perfect medium. Okay, all right. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start trimming it. So this, I'm pretty much just gonna follow the ribeye all the way around. There's kind of this white line. It's kind of a great guideline to just follow this while you're trimming it up. And I just follow that white line and making an oval shape almost. Ribeye is a delicious steak, but it does have a lot of parts that are maybe a little difficult to eat. Yes. So since we're looking for one bite to win this thing, you wanna make sure that any bite that somebody gets is a winning bite, right? Exactly, yeah. We don't wanna make sure there's any of that gristle or the silver skin on these. Right, because right. that's, 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 that's not a very winning thing to bite into. Yeah. So they give that a nice trim, like shape it, you know, give that nice oval shape that I'm looking for. Yeah. So so when the judges get a steak, what is, what's the judging process like? So yeah, they're gonna judge it by appearance, by doneness, by taste, by texture, and overall impression. Okay, so they open it up and where it lands is where they're gonna bite. From. Yep, so right? what the judges do, they actually will, if this isn't a turn-in box, they're actually gonna cut the steak right in the middle on a bias. That way you can see, then they're gonna judge everything from the top half up. So they're gonna judge the grill lines and then they're gonna look for the doneness. This is the eating side, so they never judge the towards okay. the front of the box. Okay. So they're technically judging half a steak. <laughs> okay. So I got a little jacquard here. Yeah. I just kind of smash it out and ruin all that beautiful work I've done, but we can bring it right back. The jacquard knife is a classic tool. Uh, it's great for tenderizing tough cuts of meat and even better for tenderizing tender cuts of meat. Give this a good butcher's wrap, so away and then towards me. And then what I like, what I do is I tie my knot towards me. That way I know it's the eating side. Tight twist there. And we're just doing this to make sure that it keeps its shape nice exactly. while it's cooking. Right? Yep, exactly. This is for presentation. And then we usually do get this little piece of fat right through here. And I usually go through and kind of squeeze it and trim it out just a little bit because that fat swells up when you cook ah. a little bit. So it creates like a little bit of a bubble. Then I have a marinade here. Um, there's a lot of steak marinades out there. Um, uh -huh. You can literally pick your own or whatever. Use the one you like best. Exactly. And so then it's a so I suppose you're not going to tell us all the secret ingredients to yours, right? <laughs> um, this is actually just a production. So you can go to the local okay. barbecue store and just get, it's a, it's just a bag product. So okay. there's that. Yeah. And then now since we're cooking with our effects, this is the point where I put this in and I won't take it out until we're done cooking. Okay. So what I want to do is this is our cut line. So what I'm going to try to do is ballpark that we got the immersion line and we want to see about where the judges are going to be cutting. So we're going to mark it right about there, make it the head pin. Slide it all the way through, get it to the immersion line. Yep, and so then the next step is here. This is it to go in the marinade for about five minutes. Now that it's marinated and we've taken it out and dried it off, uh, what do we do next? Yeah, next we'll uh, apply some seasonings. Um, this is kind of like my competition style seasoning. Okay. Um, a mix of other products, but it's mostly SPG. Okay, salt, yeah. pepper, garlic, and other spices there. So we're just gonna lay it on super thick, make sure we get the sides. So, and then what I do, at the competition here, Martin, because uh -huh. I have another, you know, container, and then I put the lid on it, and then with my cooker, the te starting temperature has to be right around anywhere from 90 to 100 degrees of the steak. The steak, yeah. Okay. So there's a couple people. There's a couple ways that you can do this. Um, some people will take this, put it in a Ziploc bag, sous vide it up to that temperature. Okay, yeah. Um, if you're cooking on a cold day. Some people will put it in their car on the dash, turn the heater on and bring it up. Or if it's a beautiful day like today, just put it out in the sun and let it bring up. But I try to do that really quick, under an hour, you know, right. and just. Well, it, sure it, it sounds cold. crazy to do, but uh, mm -hmm. food safety regulations say we have four hours yeah. in the temperature danger zone. So yeah. really, right right now we're sitting at about 15 minutes. Yes. We're gonna be okay if we put it in the sun for an hour. Exactly, yep. So just get, getting that up to that uh, dial temperature, since we have the RFX installed, that's why we put, put it in during this process so I can watch it come all the way back okay. to where I need to. Cool. So we'll get that we'll get that going and then we'll uh, get cooking. All right, sounds good. Yep. We left this in the sun and brought it up to temp. 
and now what are we going to do? Let's get cooking. All right, what what temperature are we looking for our grill to be at? So I'm looking for that 550 to 600 on here, and we're we're right there. As you can okay. hear, the alarm going off. Most people don't realize this has an alarm yeah. in it. So we're good to go. All right, we're hand taps here. So first thing I'm going to do is I got to spray some nonstick duck fat. Uh, anything like that works for this Pam, anything like that. So we got that in there. I let the smoke point with the Pam obviously has a little bit lower smoke point. So I kind of let that kind of come off a little bit. Let it clear up a bit. Yeah. Going to get that set on there. Go ahead and start. Go ahead and hit start. We're going to put the press on there. The weight is kind of more or less for the appearance. We want to get those right. deep, deep grill marks in there. That makes so sense. that's what we're going to go for. And we're going to do it for about a minute 30 here. So, and what happens after a minute 30? We're going to start twisting, so we're going to do four turns on this. Okay. So we're going to just give it another twist, minute 30, flip it over, do two more lines on it. Then we're going to get check our temperatures, and then we're going to move it up to the elevator. So we're at six minutes of grill time for grill marks. Exactly. So okay. Yeah. All right, we hit the hit the minute 30 point. Okay. Here, my steak weighed down. This is a kind of a little bit of a weird process here, Martin, but we take the steak off the grate. I set it on my cutting board. Take off all the charred stuff on that grate. Okay. Reapply. Give that a second to clear out. And then, so I took my steak off this way, right? As you can see, yeah. the forks were designed for this. Then I give them a 45 degree twist. Okay. I usually go right into that corner and that gives me the great cross hatch marks. Okay. So put that down there. Reapply the steak weight. Start the timer. There we go. Pull the weight down. We get that onto the cutting board. I bring this part in here. So what I do is I'll usually grab it and decide which size my. I think I think not that one. I think yeah. that one's your comp, yeah. your comp side. So then that's actually be my first side down and let that come up to temperature and then we'll flip it about halfway through. Okay. So this is not over the direct heat in, in, in the same way. We've got a little more distance there. Exactly. Yep. And now we're just applying some heat to this and just okay. going to slowly bring it up. We're at uh, our, our RFX meat says we're at 117 right now. Perfect. So we're going to go and we're going to let that run to about 127 or so, another okay. 10 degrees and we'll flip it. So this is a really specialized grill that's basically just for competition, right? This yes, isn't is. like a home grill. You fit one, maybe two steaks on here. Correct. Not super efficient for home cooking. Yeah. Um, and what we, we have the layer that we are on, what makes it different? Like, why is this different from what we had going? So right about right here, you can see where these weld marks are. Uh -huh. That's where our, our grate is. So it's elevated off the super hot 560 degree grates. Okay. And they're more sitting on some other grates that are just about th two inches above it. And we're just pretty much um, kind of indirect cooking. So okay. we're kind of removing that heat. Um, I can put a thermopen in there, kind of get you a ballpark reading on where we're at and it's about 300 degrees in there so it's slowly bringing it up um the heat is coming from the bottom so mm -hmm. that's why we got to create a flip about halfway okay because we don't want to you know have an uneven cook we want it to be completely even so we're coming up right about 127 right now martin okay but we're going to get these a little flip and see how it got a nice color to it oh yeah everything like that that's lovely and then we're just going to put it right back in there and just let it finish to about 136. So is there going to be very much carryover cooking on this? Um, we should probably see about five degrees, possibly. Okay. Um, I like my steaks to finish right at about that 139 to 142. Okay, because SCA rules ask for medium steak. Perfect. Medium right. steak, exactly. Okay. Yeah. We're using RFX with the, the Thermoworks app, and that means we've had no wires to deal with this whole time, right? Zero wires, correct. That's really fantastic. And I know we're not worried about this direct heat because the external element on the RFX is good to a thousand degrees. Correct. And we're not hitting anywhere near that in this case. We're not. And what's really nice about this is prior to the RFX, I had to use my wired probe, but I put that in after my turns because trying to trying to flip a stake with that wire. You know, just kind of, just kind of braiding it up. Exactly. Yeah. Uh -huh. so this makes it so much easier. You can watch the entire process. That's nice. Yep. And it looks like we've hit our doneness temperature here. We're going to pull it out, take a look. That's so pretty. I Looks can't wait. Great. And then we're going to let it. Then normally what I'll do is put this down over here on my cutting board. And it's going to climb it's up a, a little bit. It's a disposable cutting board, so this is clean. Don't worry. That should climb up to about where that, that 139 to 142 is what okay. I'm doing. But why I'm finishing that up is once again, we talked about it. I got a little bit of butter oh, yeah. here, right? Uh-huh. 
So what I do is actually we'll just pour some butter on this because I don't want to brush away any of those lines. And don't be scared of butter. I'm never scared <laughs> of butter. So I got a little bit on there. And then I have some finishing dust right here. It's just a rub and just and I just go ahead and just kind of add that one little bit layer of flavor, right? Yeah. And then I pick up the steak and just kind of get all that butter all moving around. Oh, it's so pretty. And then we made a little pull of butter, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. Use the we bottom of that. There. Yeah. So about 142 is where we wanted to stop, and it stopped right around there. Is this ready to go in the box? What it's yeah, it's ready to go in the box. So what I'll do is I'll position exactly where I want in the box, cut the strings, get a little bit of a paper towel, clean up any drippings, mm. close the box. Then I walk it to the judges. They verify, is this the way you want to present it? And I say yes. Then they give me a ticket. I sign my ticket and then I don't see the box ever okay. again. And then we're going to turn it sideways and cut on the bias here. As they do in the, in, in the judging. And then this is what we're going to do. We're going to show the camera. Okay, okay yeah. Uh-huh. What do you think? Oh, that's beautiful. That's really lovely. And it smells so good. I don't think I could have nailed it any better, Martin. I don't think you could have. We'll just slice this up for tasting. And there's five judges, so they usually get about, there's enough for five bites across that bottom spinalis end. So go ahead and be my judge and see where we had, how we did. Oh, we did good. Did we do good? Mm -hmm. Anthony, that steak is just delicious. It's perfectly done. It's tender. It's wonderful. I think it deserves an award. Congratulations. Thank you. Using temperature tools, you can make your steak just the way you want it. You can get competition results. Give it a try. Until next time, happy cooking.